Hi, my name is Sarah Nick Rivan. I'm a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist and an intensivist, and I have the pleasure of talking to you today about lung ultrasound. Uh, this is a section in a five-part series on lung ultrasonography as used for the evaluation of different pathologies. And right now we're gonna go ahead and talk about consolidation and the use of lung ultrasound for the evaluation of consolidations. Now, when you're looking at a, a lung um, with lung ultrasonography and are suspicious of a consolidation, it's helpful to look at the lung ultrasound and understand that a consolidation will look almost like the lung has developed a tissue-like quality. We call this lung hepatization, where it almost looks like the lung has turned into a solid organ, the way that a liver looks on ultrasound or a spleen, for example. You'll oftentimes see this um, finding called lung pulse, which we covered in the pneumothorax lecture. And air bronchograms on consolidation, just like you would on a chest x-ray or in a uh, CT of the chest, you see this non-homogeneous distribution of B lines, and it clues you into the fact that there may be consolidation within the lungs. Now, there are different pathologies that can have consolidation. Uh, some of them more commonly uh, understood are pneumonias, or any sort of mass, such as a lung cancer. Atelectasis can also look like consolidation. Infarcted lung can look like consolidation. And we oftentimes see lots of areas of consolidation in patients with ARDS or if they, a patient who's had a trauma with lung contusions. So let's look now at a lung ultrasound image to see exactly what consolidation might look like. Now I will, um, just give a little background here. This patient was in the prone position with ARDS, and you see the orientation marker on the screen is on the left-hand side of the screen because a curvilinear probe was used to acquire this image, um, and this image was in a lung ultrasound preset. And you can see here the tissue, the subcutaneous tissue of the chest wall at the top of the image, and then this black fluid or pleural effusion encasing or surrounding this consolidated lung. Within the consolidated lung, you see this starry sky appearance, which are these static air bronchograms that look very bright, almost like stars within the sky, that, um, very classic for consolidation. I will also point out, if you look very carefully at this image, you will see a dynamic air bronchogram, which is a finding that you oftentimes will find in patients who have a consolidation secondary to infection or um, a pneumonia. And this patient had both things. She had developed ARDS from a very bad pneumonia. Just want to give you a second longer to look at this image. Now here is another example of a patient with a right lower lobe consolidation. You see liver on the right hand side of the screen with the consolidated lung on the left. You see this um, very um, tissue-like quality to the lung, what we call hepatization, almost so much so that it becomes hard to delineate the way that the lung appears from the liver. If you look even more carefully at this image, you'll see another active or dynamic air bronchogram within the lung here. And I'm just gonna have you watch this for a second to see it. You see that motion within the air bronchogram, very classic of a patient with an, an infection or a pneumonia, and that being the cause of the consolidation that is seen. So in conclusion today, I would really like to wrap up all of the things that we have discussed in this five-part series. Once again, I wanted to show you this article that was published in 2012 by a panel of experts giving recommendations for point-of-care lung ultrasound, how to perform the exam, and what to use lung ultrasound with in uh, as far as pathology and the diagnosis of pathology in, for your clinical assessment of patients. 
you have to have a standardized protocol for performing the exam and acquiring images. That means knowing exactly how many areas within the chest to look in on each side of the chest. We have in this series described a eight segment evaluation of the chest, four segments on each side, anterior segments and lateral segments on both the right and the left side. You have to know how to acquire your images, what ultrasound probes to use potentially for the um, acquisition of different images and the assessment of different pathologies, and how exactly to label your images so that when you go back to review your images, you know where the pathology was seen. There is a very steep learning curve when it goes to uh, performing lung ultrasound and how to interpret it. Um, and uh, you're, you'll be able to do this very quickly the more exams that you perform at the bedside. I do want to point out to you that lung ultrasonography is very sensitive and specific for the diagnosis of pleural effusions. For pneumothoraxes, it is very, very uh, sensitive, but not as specific. And what this means is that if you see lung sliding, the patient does not have a pneumothorax. But if no lung sliding is seen, you cannot rule out a pneumothorax without working down the algorithm that we have discussed on the, in the pneumothorax talk. Making this a very sensitive test, but not a very specific test for the evaluation of pneumothorax. It, there is a lot of utility for the use of lung ultrasound for interstitial syndrome, and it is a very sensitive test for um, the evaluation of pulmonary edema or um, interstitial syndrome as it relates to ARDS or pulmonary fibrosis or pulmonary parenchymal disease. It can be a sensitive uh, for consolidations in the experienced hand or with an experienced eye. There are a number of different things that you're looking for to assess a patient for consolidation. And part of the reasons why the sensitivity of this evaluation can be kind of hit or miss is that the consolidation has to reach the pleura for you to see it very well. And that's where using other uh, findings such as the starry sky or looking the hepatization within the lungs or those uh, dynamic air bronchograms can help delineate or differentiate um, in the diagnosis for consolidation with the use of lung ultrasonography. I want to go over a case just to wrap up all of these different segments that we have covered. This is a case of a 42-year-old female who um, presented with septic shock and now had worsening respiratory distress. She had been very aggressively resuscitated with fluid and was becoming more and more short of breath um, when we performed this ultrasound. I do want to point out to you that this uh, ultrasound image was acquired in the cardiac preset, which is why the orientation marker is on the right-hand side of the screen. We performed a cardiac evaluation first and then moved on to the lung ultrasound, and so that orientation marker stayed on the right-hand side of the screen, which is classic for cardiac imaging. And now you have another image at the top of the screen where you see liver on the left and lung on the right. And in the bottom, you see a modified parasternal long access view of the heart, which we have not covered in this talk, but that shows you a very hyperdynamic heart with cavity obliteration of the left ventricle and systole. Now, what I wanna go back and talk about on this case review here is now that you've had a chance to look at these images, you can see very clearly that the lung is sliding back and forth on both of these lung ultrasound clips. You see these flashes of light that are starting from the base of the pleura going all the way down to the bottom of the screen, obliterating any A lines that may be present. And you see that this distribution of B lines is very homogeneous. There is no sparing of uh, distribution of the B lines. 
And you can see that diffusely on both image clips here. If we move to this image that you looked at earlier, you can see that the lung is consolidated within a pleural effusion, and you see that very classic starry sky appearance of consolidated lung with these static air bronchograms, very classic of atelectatic or consolidated lung, not secondary to an infectious process. And at the bottom hand of the screen, you see this hyperdynamic left ventricle, cardiac function appears hyperdynamic. So this patient had come in with septic shock, had been very aggressively fluid resuscitated, and after we had acquired these images, we became to understand that her hypotension was more secondary to a vasodilatory state as opposed to a hypovolemic state. We began to support her with vasopressors. And once her blood pressure became more stable, we were able to gently diurese her to get fluid off of her lungs because we were seeing pulmonary edema with those diffuse bee lines and then further evidence of volume overload with a pleural effusion. The patient was able to be transitioned off of non-invasive positive pressure in a timely fashion and discharged from the intensive care unit within days. I want to thank you so much for your time, and I hope that you've enjoyed this five-part series on lung ultrasonography.